So we are an institute uh, with plant breeding in its name. Uh, we don't do applied breeding, making new varieties, but we do basic research on plant biology, understand how plants work. In our approach, we often look for genetic differences for plants that differ uh, in certain traits, certain properties, uh, some flower late, some flower early, and then we try to uh, figure out which genes uh, determine uh, these differences. Uh, we try to find out where these genes are located on the chromosomes and what these genes are at the DNA level. I studied plant breeding in uh, Wageningen University, so it's the only place in fact where you can really st study plant breeding. After my masters I worked for two years in a breeding company, so I'm still proud of that because I really have done the handwork myself, uh, also know how companies work. And then I came back to the University of Wageningen to do my PhD on plant genetics. I was uh, in retrospect very lucky uh, that my professor said you should work on Arabidopsis. At that moment, it was not a real good model. Uh, very few people worked on that, but that gave me a possibility to do many new things. Um, then I stayed in the same department of genetics. I moved up to the ranks of assistant professor, uh, associate professor, full professor, but full professor. I had a personal chair until 2004 when I was asked to become a director at this institute. I still keep uh, a link with Wageningen where I'm professor for one day a week in the same department. Uh, the importance of Arabidopsis is simply that it's efficient, that it's easy to work with. It has a short generation time, uh, it's a relatively small plant so you don't need much greenhouse space. These were old genetic advantages uh, to which uh, later was added the fact that this is the plant with the smallest, one of the plants with the smallest genome. So the n amount of DNA is, is fairly small. This is our show garden, a public relations garden, uh, teaching garden, uh, where we try to demonstrate to the public, uh, and that is really from primary school kids to uh, high school uh, teachers, um, what plants are, let's say, but especially what plant diversity is, uh, how, uh, how much variation you can have within a species um, that you can combine and that is in fact the basis for all modern plant breeding. Here we see uh, many different cabbages uh, and, and the message here is, uh, is this is all the same species. If we want to combine them, properties from Brussels sprouts, if you want to make red Brussels sprouts, no problem, we can do it. Uh, by classical genetics, you don't need um, advanced molecular biology on that, but this is what we want to show. Plant breeding is making use of the variation that exists in nature and sometimes also variation that we can create uh, with, with chemical means, mutagenesis. Uh, that's, that's what we want to show here. Uh, and our challenge is really to get into the, the basic, uh, yeah, to understand these differences. I was brought up in at Westland. Uh, my father was a commercial gardener. He was growing commercial crops. And I think that having this background in horticulture, knowing that for the commercial gardeners, having a new variety that would increase yield 10% or make plants resistant, that was really the type of benefit that I, I, uh, where they didn't have to pay more, they just had to buy a new variety and then they could improve their own situation. I found that this is a way to advance in this case agriculture and I want to do something on that and so that combined with an interest in biology um, yeah, made me choose to study plant breeding and plant breeding is based on genetics so that I thereafter move to uh, basic genetics and not only breeding.
barley is also interesting because uh, the wild barley is still there and it's, it's not uh, an extinct species. It's, it's huge amounts of wild barley you can find in the Middle East um, and, and only the cultivated barley comes only from a very small subset of that wild barley and what we are doing now is uh, trying to exploit uh, these other wild barleys because they may have properties uh, that have not been uh, used to improve barley. Here we have a very nice example of one of the uh, wild ancestors which don't look uh, as, as wheat. I mean it's very difficult to, to recognize a modern, I will show here, the, the difference between uh, the wild ancestor and the cultivated um, wheat ear is, is quite uh, dramatic, but uh, how did that occur? What genetic differences occurred in the original parents which were picked up by farmers and which are uh, now exploited further uh, to improve wheat uh, in even more? That, that's a very intriguing uh, question and, and, and something which is certainly uh, quite well doable. Uh, of course, we, we understand, the, let's say, the scientific community is one community that speaks the same language. Not only, I mean, they speak English, but also the way of thinking. And, and, and I have always been, uh, let's say, I have been depending in my success also on interactions with other people, on collaborating uh, with people for which I could offer my genetic knowledge. And uh, maybe that openness is... is uh, this type of uh, attitude of uh, open to interaction and collaboration is something where you benefit from, especially in an institute like this where there are many people, where there is a lot of know-how, where you can try to combine things. And, and that's, uh, that's yeah, what I, one of the things that I like.